again, what do we do when error is being taught in the church? You may not understand that so much here, maybe in this church. We hope that you do not. But you know, there are countless churches. This is a cry that's coming out from them. We don't know what to do. Well, where does that put an individual? Where does that put a, a pastor or a minister? When you hear these kind of questions, do you, well, it's going to offend somebody if I tell what they should do, or do we just go ahead and say, this is what God's Word says. You're going to have to decide, here's what the Word says. You look at it, you decide what you need to do, because we come to that point. Turn with me, if you will, in the book of Matthew. The New Testament, Matthew chapter 15, I'm going to read a couple of verses, 12 through 14. Matthew chapter 15, we're going to read verses 12 through 13 and 14. Now remember, when you read it from the Word of God, it must be so. And because you may not like it, or I may not like it, that's kind of immaterial, isn't it? It's what God has said. So that's why we get back into it and say, this is what God said. But then there'll be those who will try to counterbalance it over here and say, yeah, but now we want to... What does God say? In Matthew 15, beginning with verse 12, the Bible says... Then came the disciples and said unto him. Who were they talking to? Christ. Yeah, they're talking to Christ. Here comes some group, right? The disciples came, the followers, and said to him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? You ever know of anyone who's become offended because they've maybe heard what is truth? Something they heard, they were offended by it. And usually when you're offended by something, you do something about it. Amen. You know, usually if you're offended. You know, a lot of different ways to be handled here. We're going to look how God handles it here. So anyway, Jesus was talking, and all of a sudden, somebody became offended. A group became offended. Hmm. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Every plant what? Every plant that right, the heavenly Father has not planted will be rooted up. We're living in a time where there are those who we think should be planted, are, are, they're unrooting, their they're roots, you see, are dying, and they're coming up, and they're leaving, and they're all of a sudden saying, well, I don't believe this anymore. Could it just be, could it just be that maybe all the time that maybe the Heavenly Father had not planted them? Maybe they're here because they grew up here, or maybe, you know, whatever it might be, they thought it was okay, and then they, you know, things came along, and then they decided to change their life and their, their lifestyle, but God said, if I plant you, that you, you're going to be here, but everyone that I don't plant eventually will be rooted up, and you'll find that maybe they're going somewhere else, they're doing something different, and we just can't figure it out. Maybe they were never really planted. Maybe they never really had roots. Those roots have to grow deep in the soil of truth. We know that. Verse 14, notice what Jesus says. He said, let them alone, they that be blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both shall what? Fall into the ditch. So basically you have the leaders then basically coming, speaking for the people, didn't like what Jesus had to say. And so they're looking at this, and Jesus is saying to them, you know what, we need to let them alone because they're blind, because they can't see. And when you can't see, you're going to end up making a shipwreck of your faith. You're going to fall into a ditch. You're going to get hurt. I read this and I said, well, what was it? Here was Christ speaking to the scribes and the Pharisees here. You know, and then he was, he was talking, he rebuked them for what? Putting the commandments of men above the commandments of God. And they all of a sudden were offended he said, you're putting your traditions before thus saith the Lord, and they became offended. Now, was it truth that offended them? It had to be Jesus was speaking it. They were offended because of truth, and they were in the church. They were in good standing. Are you still with me? They were the leadership. You were in good standing, as it were, with God or your church or whatever. But it doesn't mean you can't make mistakes. Or maybe you're not doing the right thing. And every situation needs to be looked at. They were offended. They, I said, what, what offended them? Interesting, if you're in Matthew 15, just back up to verse uh, 9. Notice verse 9, what Jesus said to them. 
You remember what, it, and this is what offended them. He said, but in vain do they what? Matthew 15, verse 9. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Jesus was telling right then, no, all these people looking at in vain they're worshiping me. In vain you're going to church. In vain you're, you know, you're worshiping over here and you're teaching, but you're teaching the wrong thing. Something has to be done. Jesus just said, leave them alone. Now, what did he mean by that? It's pretty heavy duty. Leave them alone. Truth always seems to offend the unsanctified. Somebody think now. Truth offends, it seems, always the unsanctified. Truth never should offend us. It might hurt a little bit because we've been found guilty. And we thank God. Well, oh, I didn't know that. Thank you, Lord. Instead of getting offended and throw the shoe at the pastor. Or get mad at God. But this seems what happened. The unsanctified. Huh. Do you realize air, when you think about air, where air really comes from? Where does, what does air do? Air always grasps a hold of truth like a leech. It draws its life from the truth. Somebody needs to hear that. No lie is of the truth. Never listen to anyone, even for a moment, to a person who would loosen one pin or would remove one pillar from the platform of truth. You've got to know what the platform of truth is. You, got, you have to know what this movement's founded on. Anyone, didn't say, it said anyone who would start to loosen, just loosen it a little bit have nothing to do with them because they're fastened by God. They were given these truths, these doctrines by God. Revelation 3, 3 simply just says, hold fast. Repent. Hold fast. Separate from any kind of error. We've come this far. Let's not fall short. It may not mean anything to anybody here, but there'll be hundreds or thousands of others who hear and know exactly what I'm talking about, and they'll have to make that decision. We hear about it. And it's very difficult to come out because people will start pointing fingers and say, well, you shouldn't say that. You shouldn't do that. You know what? I stand here today and say, I didn't. God did. We have an issue. Take it up with, with God. It's time to withdraw ourselves from anyone that's walking contrary to the doctrines of God. Make that decision today. Make that decision today that you're going to walk with God, even if it's alone, by yourself. You don't want to miss heaven. Let's pray about it, shall we? As we make that decision right now, let's pray. Our loving Father in heaven, truly we, again as we come before Thee, our hearts are grateful, we're thankful. Lord, even though this, sometimes the words are, are, are tough, you knew they were. You lived through it. Over and over and over you were hit by different ones with different sayings and different uh, words that came back to you that, well, you're not telling the truth. And we become offended by what you have said. And Lord, we realize you offend no man. You always told the truth. And today we realize those who will stand in the last days of earth's history, they will be labeled as offenders. They'll be labeled as those who are troublemakers of Israel. They'll be labeled as those who are always saying and doing something to try to tear the people apart. Quite contrary. We're trying to bring unity and harmony into the churches and one another and brothers and sisters. But yet it's always putting you first in our hearts and in our lives. Lord, it's a challenge. It's a test. And we pray that each one will be faithful to that test today. Those who have been in a valley decision no longer will be in a valley decision. They cannot sit in a place where error is being taught, where it's being lived out, where exceptions are being made, where God made no exceptions. That means the enemy is reigning and ruling there, not God. May we be willing, whatever it takes, if we have to fellowship in our own little house, in our own little home by ourselves, so be it, that we may follow your will and your will only. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. <music>